Welcome to this video, which aims to be a comprehensive tutorial on what a demo dash is and how to bind a demo dash button. Demo buttons are fully legal for speedruns and are generally accepted by the Celeste community to be fair game in all applications. However, some people still don't have a demo button and insist on either doing demos manually or not doing demos at all. So this video is for anyone who still doesn't have a demo button so that there's no excuse not to get one. First, I'm going to talk about what a demo dash is and everything regarding how it functions. For those of you who are not interested in the specifics, you can skip ahead. I'll leave timestamps in the description. Next, I'll show you how to actually bind a demo key for any control scheme. Finally, I'll show you some places to flex your new key and practice demo dashing through spinners. Please note that this tutorial is only for computer players. I've never played Celeste on console, and I'm not aware if binding a demo dash button is possible there. A demo dash is essentially a normal dash in the crouched state. This makes Madeline's hurt box smaller and allows her to dash through sufficiently large gaps in spinners, like so. Demoing also allows Madeline to hyper from a horizontal dash instead of supering. This is called a demo hyper. Here's an example of an ordinary super. And here's an example of a demo hyper. Notice the difference in trajectories. The demo hyper is faster and lower. There are several in-game factors that allow demo dashes to work. The first principle is called dash redirecting. When Madeline initiates a dash, the entire game, as well as the speedrun clock, freezes for four frames. On the fifth frame, the dash begins. However, the direction depends on the direction the player is now holding, not the direction held at the start of the dash. This is a forgiveness mechanic designed to make the game feel less unfair. The idea is that it's okay to press the direction slightly after pressing the dash button, you don't have to be holding it first. The next factor is that when Madeline starts a downwards dash, she gets put into the crouching state during freeze frames. If she continues to dash downwards, she will become uncrouched as soon as the dash starts up. For this reason, demo dashing downwards is impossible. However, if the dash is redirected horizontally or in any upwards direction, the crouch state will persist. This is a demo dash. A manual demo consists of holding down while dashing, then redirecting to another direction before the dash starts. However, since this is only a 4 frame window, it's difficult to do reliably. A demo button abuses an interesting property of how Celeste receives inputs to make this process much easier. By binding a different key to down and holding it while dashing, the down input is submitted to put Madeline into crouch during the freeze frames. Then, by holding right or left on the default controller, meaning arrows, d-pad, or analog stick, the down input is overridden, and instead of dashing down, Madeline demo dashes horizontally. There are two approaches to creating a demo button. The first is to have a single button input both down and dash, which is my method. The second is to have a separate button for down and use your normal dash key. Demo dashing straight up or up diagonal is possible too, although it's less useful. Unfortunately, holding up on the default controller cancels the crouch and will not allow simple up demos. One method to up demo is to release the controller, press demo, and then redirect from neutral to upwards. It's harder than a horizontal demo, but easier than a manual demo. Another setup for up demos is to dash directly into the ground, then buffer an up dash or up diagonal. No demo key required. Another thing to point out is that the white line through Maddie is lower on a demo dash. For a normal dash, it's at about her chest level, but for a demo dash, it's down around her knees. It's time to talk about key binds. In order to make a demo dash key, you will need to bind one key to multiple functions and multiple keys to one function. This is made easy with the latest version of Everest, Celeste's mod loading tool. With Everest, all you have to do is press Shift Enter and you can add extra binds. There's a download link to Everest in the description, it's easy to install. Keep in mind that Everest is not allowed for speedruns, but if you want to switch back to vanilla, 
All you have to do is go back to the title screen and hold right. If you don't have Everest, you can still create multiple keybinds by editing your settings.celeste file. This can be found in the saves folder of your installation. The default path for the Steam installation is written in the description. Alternatively, search for the file on your computer. To add keybinds, find the line for the function you want and add a key using the same formatting. If you're already using arrow keys, making a demo button is extremely simple. All you have to do is bind any key to down and also to dash. That's it. If you instead want to use the second method, bind some key to down, then hold that key when using your normal dash. Another convenient tip is to also bind your demo key to confirm. That way, you can simply press pause and demo to retry or skip cutscenes faster. If you're playing on non-default keyboard controls, such as WASD, which I use, this is where things get interesting. You may notice that I don't have WASD bound in my options menu. This is because, for the override function to work, we need to be using the arrow keys. This means we need a program like Auto Hotkey to rebind WASD to arrows. Don't worry, keyboard and controller rebinders are speedrun legal. I'll put a link in the description to download Auto Hotkey. After downloading it, you'll need to write a script. You can write your auto hotkey code in any text editor, then save it as a .ahk file. You can also right click on your desktop and click New Auto Hotkey Script. Here's an example of a simple script. Now, I'm not an expert on auto hotkey, so I'll admit right now that I don't know what all of these headings do. I only have them because they are recommended to me. Send mode event, however, seems to be very important for getting rid of a stuck keys issue. Other than that, we have Control plus Numpad 0 to pause the script so that typing, such as file names or in console or ghostnet chat, is possible. Here are the main rebinds. This if when active condition makes sure that the keys are only rebound in Celeste and go back to normal if I minimize the window. And finally, I have the win key disabled. Here's my auto hotkey script, which I actually use in game. It's a little fancier, but it works mostly the same. I just added this status variable to keep track of when I'm typing in console or ghostnet chat and automatically disable the rebind so I can type normally. That means I don't have to use control numpad zero every time. I also bound P to pause and disabled the dot key opening console. I'll put a link in the description to download this for anyone who wants to use it. Now that you have WASD rebound to arrows with auto hotkey, just bind any key to both down and dash as before. As you can see, my demo button is J. If you play on controller, you'll need to download a controller rebinder, such as Joy to Key. I'll leave a link in the description. Note that Switch Pro controller users will need to go through a different method. See the document by Jackson Fell in the description. Start by opening the program and clicking Create to make a profile. Press the button on your controller to see it highlighted. Double click on the button to edit assignment. The easiest way to do this is to bind the button to down and X, the default dash key. You can also bind it to confirm as before. Joy to key binds should be active immediately, but you can suspend processing from the system tray. Alternatively, you can bind your controller button to an arbitrary keyboard key like J and bind that key to demo like before. Make sure that your demo button on the controller is not bound to anything in-game. Now to show off some cool applications of demo dashing. Obviously, the first place to go is the demo room in Farewell. If you turn on hitbox display, you can see that the gaps here are really wide. You can also turn around and go back through the entrance demo. You can demo here to go under the block and skip using the touch switch. There's a demo here at the end of this screen that can skip using the moving block, but it's pretty hard. 
Moving on from Farewell, the next place to talk about is the elevator shaft demo in 3A. There's a document pinned in Speedrun General on the Celeste Discord with all the details about how to do this one. Going back to earlier in the video, there's the Flag 3 demo in 7B. This one is literally free. It's perfectly set up by the Hyper. And finally, there's this demo at the end of the Reflection Checkpoint in 6B. This one's actually kind of hard. That's all for this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, leave a comment. If there's any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Discord. Thanks for watching, and enjoy!